The spines look nice with the spider web because you've been sitting here for a day and my basement's all they they be like pretty sure this is like the epicenter of where spiders come from <laughs> is my basement. <laughs> What's up, Rangers? Welcome to the Geek Chest. My name's Steve. Today we're we'll going to be working on this commission here for our good buddy Robert, who sent me a Kyoto Godzilla vinyl kit to paint. Uh, so, pretty quick video. Uh, there isn't too much complicated with these. If you guys haven't seen a vinyl kit, I don't think I've really done one on the channel. Uh, this one, you guys will see a video, <laughs> but. Um, I haven't filled me working on it though, so I haven't really sh shown actually how you do one of these. But with uh, vinyl kits, when you get them in, you get all these in parts. So like his hand would have been in a separate part, the arm would have been a separate part, the head would have been a separate part, all this, even the, some of the spines. Um, but they have, oh, I wish I had an example, but they'll have like access plastic, uh, vinyl on them and you have to cut it off. Uh, which is a bit of a pain in the butt to do. Uh, you just take a hair dryer, you heat it up, Using an Zecto knife, slowly <laughs> and safely carve it out because I definitely cut myself a few times doing those. And then you just glue and assemble, essentially. Uh, and some even like form fit, which is really nice when they do that. And they're fairly intimidated for new model makers. To be honest, I haven't even done that many of them. Uh, <laughs> he's probably the most complicated one I've done currently. And I still have to clean up a bunch of my cut marks on that guy. Uh, and that's kind of like the hard part with these is making sure you get all your cuts nice and snug um sometimes even after that you still don't really get clean lines because you can kind of see here hopefully but there is some gappage here a little bit of gapping going along here there's actually a really nasty one right up on the front here uh same with around the head has some gaps too uh so what i'm gonna do i asked him if he wants it filled or not um, I think I'm still going to fill it anyways, just be preemptive, <laughs> if you will. But definitely want to do the legs here. The tail will probably leave alone because I'll just leave it like an X plus where you just pop it in. There might be a little bit of a seam. I'll probably clean up the cut around here just a little bit to make it look good. But other than that, uh, maybe around, I don't know, the arms actually look pretty solid. Uh, maybe. Just to keep them secure, I guess would be kind of nice. Uh, looks like around the claws, and then the jaw, dorsal spines actually look pretty clean, so I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, just noticing the toes. Ah, well actually there's quite a bit more on here than I thought. But yeah, there's the toe section too. So, um, <laughs> I guess we'll just start getting to it. All right, just going by some images, uh, looking around the film. I'm uh, just starting to, as you guys can see, I've already done some gap filling just to test it out on this guy. Um, and then I'm just gonna go over with my paint that I'm gonna use like, for my primer uh, to give it the base coat and then go over top of it with a dry brushing, add all the details later. But just mainly wanna make sure that all my, where I fill in the gaps are gonna look fine. Uh, I will show you guys how to do this for the neck region here, uh, but for the most part right now it's just going to be adding the base color and then we're going to paint the inside of the mouth um, because since this is going to be a Spitfire version, I got to paint the inside, we'll attach it, and then uh, I already lost my train of thought. We're going to make the seal <laughs> for around that to try to hide the gap and then we'll finish painting the kaiju shortly thereafter. So right now I'm just going to be dabbing a bunch of gray and see what happens. Uh, I was thinking about airbrushing this, but I don't want to it to pool up in certain areas. So this is pretty much the best way to go about it. Uh, instead of the airbrushing. Uh, it's kind of the reason why I'm also not using a spray primer is because it could hide a lot of the details when you go, when you spray it in, because it's kind of hard to control the paint. Unless you even with the airbrush for the most part. So, doing it this way, which on a high note, looks like the gaps are going to hide pretty well. We shall see. We shall see.
screwed up mixing up my one pile. So uh, I wanted to bright it up because in the film, it's definitely a very bright like sky blue for his back. Uh, the way the atomic blast is showing up. So the way I'm going to do the inside of his mouth is literally just ripping off the uh, the new like heat ray Godzilla because I think uh, that'll be the best. So we're essentially just going to be adding the blue inside of the mouth and then just highlighting the back of the throat with some white. And should be good. So pretty much just going to coat the ton area. Uh, pretty much like the inside of the mouth is going to be the blue and then we'll detail the outside. So take a little bit of paint and just start lining it on. Try to be careful not to get too crazy. I don't want it really spilling outside of the mouth. So I think kind of like this is going to be good. Because uh, for the most part I think the front of the ton I want to leave alone so I can get like the reds and stuff because the way his tongue's kind of flicking up it's gonna kind of block in the beam I would think I do see a couple little areas that could be a little better though hey, you know what I think we'll just do the ins entire inside <laughs> Uh, there's like some parts I'm kind of hiccuping uh, don't be afraid when you're painting one of these things like you have some screw ups here and there because a lot of this stuff's pretty easy to correct especially since I'm using a lot of acrylic paints anyways uh, right it. maybe I want to switch out my brushes at some point but for the most part paint's fine that's yeah, pretty much like put my red on just gonna clean up some of my teeth all right there we go teeth all set up Zoom out a little bit, maybe makes it a little easier. All set up, ready to go. So now, since we got the mouth on, it's really hard to. Eh, there we go. Since we got the mouth on, uh, done. We can attach it to our body here, and then we will sculpt it into place. Set it up. You guys will notice it's a little off centered because the top of the head, uh, the way it was placed, is a little crooked. <laughs> Uh, so I fixed it back here. We're gonna do the same for the front of the jaw here. Uh, so we're gonna mix up a little bit of milliput, get that on there, and then while that's curing, well, actually, I think we'll touch up the detailing and then we will add the uh, do that because once that's done, I will just have to repaint that section and then just add like all the dirt on it. So. Work on getting the rest of this set up while kind of dries because once it's curing, <laughs> I can't really touch it too much. So let's work on the dorsal spines, shall we? So for the small spines, it's pretty much over the tops here, and then this is kind of how you would expect to see it <laughs> in the film. Oh, I did get a little bit at the end. <sighs> All right, we'll touch that up here in a few because I gotta mix some more of that gray. So, anyways, let's do the same thing I've been doing. Just Dry brushing it on, and then just layer it on as I go. All right, don't really get a good shot of the tail, but pretty much where the spike, the final spikes, that looks like where it pretty much ends. So this little part, it doesn't really go up the head. Well, I guess we'll just go down the tail. I think it'd look nicer anyways. But when doing like the tail tips here, you just kind of want to go almost, you want to go like with a, kind of like a dry brush, if you will. Um, but with a thicker layer, so I'm just kind of like using the side of the brush and just dabbing the tips on. I'm just kind of following where the beam is, or where the tail is. So off the tail, it's not going to really have like too much going on, but in terms of brightness, because it does taper off pretty quick.
too bad anyways. It's got a little bit of overage, but just like I said, we can clean that up. Once it's done drying, not too bad for CISO. Looking up, looking up. Yeah, this <laughs> is for being such simplistic guys. I'm very pleased with the way that turned out. All right, gotta make some more gray so I can touch up around his head. All right, got his eyes done, looking spiffy. Next is claws, and then we will. Uh, once that's all set, we gotta do the sculpting. Huh. On a high note, I think I just used the same gray. They're not really bone color, from what I can tell from the film. So, I think I'm just going to use the same coloring I use for the eyes. To just kind of dry brush the claws a bit. Actually, no I don't. No, I do not. So we're just going to take the brighter gray, smear them up a little bit. So I want to make it look like it's damaged. Like in the film, he would have been scuffling, so it would have had more of a weathered look to it to begin with. Now you might be asking yourself why I'm not giving him bone coloring, because they like the teeth uh, are more animalistic, but I'm not doing the nails. Well, later on in the film anyways, and uh, except for like mainly the parts where he's scuffling at Kong, which is primarily when you've seen him with this atomic blast look anyways uh the nails kind of looked like they were worn off like you could definitely tell there was like gray there but there, there was no more like bone color or nail coloring there to say the least so uh for the most part i'm gonna keep it kind of replicated to the film so uh and then this part because we're making it look like a spitfire anyways i might be adding some more blue there here in a little bit anyways but for the most part base figure is essentially done uh, so, I'm going to show you guys how I've been doing the epoxy uh, for cleaning up the lines. And then, got to wait till tomorrow to finish them up. Alright, so what I got here, some two-part epoxy. Uh, this is Abe's. Abe's epoxy sculpt. Stuff's phenomenal. <laughs> it's also like, I think like a little 20 bucks for these two here, which uh, equate to a pound, which is quite a bit. Uh, so far, I've used this to sculpt like this, the Manda, <laughs> the Super Godzilla. I'd use some of this to touch up the Malasaur, because the Malasaur is mostly Milliput, which is same stuff, essentially. Um, but this uh, stuff, on the other hand, yeah, it's just a little cheaper. Um, I will say the Milliput like, gives you a lot longer work time than this stuff does, though, because this seems to cure pretty quick. Uh, but, messaging the guy right now, actually, about this. Um... What I'm going to need, I don't need a lot, because so essentially I'm just going to be making a little, just enough to kind of fill the neck region in here, and then maybe a little extra just to make it make sense. So, for the most part, I'm thinking this would be about plenty. So, what you do, you can either, you can measure this out if you really wanted to. You can weigh it up. Uh, what's nice, though, so, at least with the A's I've noticed, is you can kind of just roll them into a ball, eyeball the size, and as long as you're pretty close, it seems to work very well. Uh, so these are about the same size. So what you do is just start kneading them together until you get one consistent color. Now, the one thing that kind of sucks about A's over Milliput is because they're both a gray. <laughs> one's light gray, one's dark gray. Uh, it's not the easiest to tell when it's all mixed together. For the most part, it's just like once you don't see any like little slightly darker swirls in, you know you're good. Uh, you can also use putty if you want, or not putty. You can also wear gloves doing this. Uh, I'm not too concerned. Uh, just make sure if you are going to do this without wearing gloves uh, to wash your hands when you're all done. Uh, because once it cures, it's a lot harder to get off your skin. Uh, but... I'm going to be washing my hands anyways to get some of the excess paint off. So you just knead it together. It usually takes a couple minutes. Um, if you're doing small balls, though, it's usually pretty quick. It's looking like it's pretty much all one consistent color now. So, next, I need to make a strand. Uh, 
That should be about plenty, I would think. I always seem to make more, <laughs> do more of this stuff than I need to. Because I'm mainly just trying to hide that right there. It's going to kind of squish it down. I'm going to have to get that piece out of the jaw there, but we'll worry about that here in a minute. Put that up here. Uh, probably going to need a little more putty. Not too much more crazy, but a little bit there. Just kind of fill that out. Oops, smacking it with this tail. Squish it in. And then you just kind of start sculpting in the shape. Now, I will say I am not the foremost expert in sculpting. Uh, to be honest, when I did this, I actually had to go back over it with a... Didn't show it there. But I actually had to go back over the Dremel to harden my edges. Because once it cured and then I applied paint, uh, you could definitely tell where I uh, added the epoxy. Uh, right now, it's not quite as noticeable. Like, if you're really looking, you can tell. Uh, but with the dry brushing and stuff, it's not quite as noticeable. Like, you can see right there is where the line is. Here, it blended pretty well. Around the back of the head, it blended pretty well. Thighs are a little harder. Underneath, doesn't look too bad either. But you just kind of just try to match, match the skin texture. Uh, he's got a little lip right here, so I'm going to... Add that to it. Uh, a lot of the tools I use, uh, you can just get these little guys at like Hobby Lobby. They're just they're literally like clay sculpting, clay sculpting. It's little wooden blades. There's plastic ones, and then these guys, which are actually like jewelry, it's for making jewelry. Up there, like little metal balls, which I actually have to clean off here. <laughs> but these are great for doing like little fine details and impress and pushing in on the clay. To make sure that it's uh where it needs to be because like i already tell here i might have too much because i want to get more of this jaw showing than what it's currently is but you kind of use this to press it in uh same with like working with clay you can uh, wet it down smooth out the detailings uh, i'm sure there's definitely a lot better people to explain it to you than me because i'm not uh, a lot of this sculpting stuff's fairly new to me, so a lot of the times, if I got a question, I tend to Google it anyways. So depending on what you're doing, I would recommend checking out some uh, other YouTubers that mainly sculpt a little bit more. Uh, cause, like I said, I'm fairly a novice, but I can kind of, you just lay it on and just go with the detailing is the easiest way I can say it. Uh, specific techniques, on the other hand. Uh... Not quite as good with but we'll get there at some point so here you guys can kind of see i got it to where i want it i got enough of the jaw showing it's gonna kind of again oh this i kind of just pat <laughs> but we'll make my detailing because i want to make it look like it's kind of folding in a little bit and then just adding the grid of detail so I like the skin here i'm just kind of using a toothbrush here i got laying around here <laughs> <laughs> for brushing off stuff. Kind of make the skin texture. To me, it kind of looks like it's just a bunch of little imprints, so that's what we're going to do. Pretty much just been using a toothbrush to get my texturing in. Which looks like it's doing the job pretty well. Maybe something a little bit more bristles, but make a couple larger little holes. Kind of like what I see in some parts of the suit. All right, now we just let it cure. And then we'll come back, finish touching them up. Here, real quick, I'm uh, just doing a little bit of airbrushing to uh, get him some dirty spots. Just lightly going over some sections here. Make it look like he's been playing in the dirt a little bit. Also, my hair hair dryer decided that I wanted to fall at the most opportune time but looking pretty good got his kneecaps got his feet covered up Add a little more detail into the bottom here pretty much just trying to get everywhere that like the sand would have kind of popped up in the movie so that's a little bit here and there on the tail and then finally just gonna add a little bit more blue around the mouth region here and then 
show you guys a closer look and we're done. All right, here real quick, I'm just adding a little bit of blue right to the tip of the mouth here just to give it a little bit more of that illumination look and just trying to gauge my airbrush essentially, make sure it's gonna be good. I'm just gonna blast it ever so slightly. I gotta go crazy, but just kind of want to get the inside of the mouth a little bit. And here's the end product for the Kotopiki uh, vinyl model of the 1962 Godzilla that we turned into a Spitfire. Um, a little sad that it was like a glow in the dark kit, so it's like we murdered it. But I think it's for the better because uh, I'm not to toot my own horn here, but I think uh, this might be the best paint job I've done yet. <laughs> to be fair, um, let's to be honest. For the most part, I like it's mainly the um, the dinosaurs. I try to replicate paint jobs, but even then, I'm not really like I'm replicating like game paint jobs and stuff. I'm not really re trying to like get the movie look down or um, trying to make something that's like already a thing. While like 62, like we've seen how he is in the movie. <laughs> so uh, I tried to get as close to that as I possibly could. Um, didn't want to make it look like the X plus cause I feel like one that's kind of cheating and two from what I can tell from the movie, the X plus looks a little off to me. Um, not crazy off, but just mainly like the extra detailing. Um, the X plus is mainly rely on lighting to kind of pull that off. Well, I just kind of did it. Um, that, and because we made it a Spitfire version, we have the, atomic blue on the back which in the film it is a very like sky blue color so i tried to replicate that as much uh there is a little bit of metallic flake in there just to get, make it look a little bit more radioactive uh did the five spine sections uh though in the movie you don't really see his tail lighting up uh decided to do it anyways because like every time he's doing his blast you usually don't see this section for the most part uh, so did it anyways, it just kind of makes sense for Godzilla. I did it all the way to the end of the tail here. Uh, you'll notice that he does have dirt on him. And by dirt, I mean some brown airbrush paint. Uh, did primarily the chest crotch region because like skidding on the ground, like these are probably gonna be the sections that are most dirty. Did the elbow regions here. We did the hands towards the later half of the film. He doesn't really have much paint on his hand, so I kind of didn't bother really doing the nails is that and primarily because he's also gonna have the dirt over top of him so you can see like um they're the same coloring as i use for the dry brush over the skin so they're not like it's not all that really dark gray uh, same with the nails on the bottom here you can see it's got a little bit of it on it but then it's also got the dirt airbrushed over top of it also did the knees and underneath the tail because <laughs> tails mainly dragging in the dirt so he's gonna have quite a bit under here uh, made it darker in certain sections, especially where it's going to be literally touching the ground. So those sections here and here where the wire would be. Um, sprayed a little bit on the sides too, just to give it a little bit of like a dust look. Same with underneath the feet as well. Head sculpt. Might have to adjust the camera, but I think we got good enough. Uh, turned out really nice. Really like the way the eyes turned out. That's nice doing these kind of Godzilla's because there's only really the two colors, so you don't have to go super crazy on the detailing. Uh, it's mainly just getting them to not look googly. <laughs> so definitely need our Godzilla looking as high as humanly possible. And I think I pulled that off pretty well. Uh, inside the mouth, you might notice that he's got some blue going on, just like I sh we talked about previously, because he's a atomic blast version. Like he's kind of like charging up. So I wanted it to show off a bit in the mouth here too. Uh, but in the movie, when he's doing the blast, you don't really see like the blue uh, really going anywhere else other than outside the mouth. So I decided to keep it on the inside to keep it uh, more film accurate. Uh, lightened up the chest a little bit more than the rest of the body because in the film, his chest shows off very well. So one well, with a slightly lighter gray than what I do with everything else, just to make it pop a little bit better. And yeah, super de duper pleased with this. Kind of sad I got to send it out, but he paid for it. So we're going to do it. Even like the clay, it didn't really show off that too much, but... We, since we filled in the gapping here, looks really nice too. Especially like when you look at it, you can kind of figure out where the sections are here that have the clay on them. Uh, actually pretty pleased. I got the neck detail fairly well matched. Uh, same with the back of the head. You can kind of see it right there a little bit. Uh, this side blended a little bit better. 
Uh, same with this, like it's pretty much like this side period just blended better. Uh, same with around the arms here, around the legs, crotch region, can't even tell. But anyways, uh, same with even on the feet. I think the feet were like the easiest things to hide the, the seam lines too. Because even underneath, you can kind of tell, but it's uh, pretty well hidden, I think. Uh, but especially when you're looking at it, not even from a distance, just kind of like on your shelf. It uh, blends in very well, I think. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. We'll have some more custom stuff here in the near future. Got the Malasaur. Got a shredder display that I'm currently working on. Uh, the Giver should be not wrapping up soon, but hopefully in a couple weeks I'll have it done. <laughs> and also got an Ultimasaur one. Uh, I actually got to start working on him probably uh, as of this recording tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, should be fun. But anyways, help us defeat those guys by hitting the like button, subscribe, and come over today. We also have Instagram, Patreon, Pinterest, and Facebook. Guys, like, keep up to date with the channel and donate. We greatly appreciate it. Also on our Discord for our Patreon. I've been showing off these customs as I've been also working on. Plus, we've been discussing stuff, showing off new figures that I've gotten in before they hit the channel. Good times. But anyways, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.